Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, I'm Lieutenant General Tyrone Urch. My day job is something called Commander Home Command, responsible for supporting UK government resilience operations. And I also look after pretty much everything in the people delivery space for the British Army. It's a great pleasure to be here tonight, albeit in a slightly different guise as the Chief Royal Engineer. And as we conclude this inaugural Royal Engineers Awards dinner in this wonderful institution of civil engineers, Great Hall, I know you'll agree it's been an amazing evening. So before I invite up the Right Honourable Mark Lancaster, our own Minister for the Armed Forces, and himself a Royal Engineer, Reservist Colonel with masses of operational experience, I'd like to offer a few closing remarks, if I could, and say a several well-earned thank yous. So the Corps of Royal Engineers can trace its heritage back to the Anglo-Saxon kings. Royal engineering, if indeed that is a verb, but please stick with me, Royal engineering was certainly put on the map by Gundolf, who was Bishop of Rochester and the chief engineer to William the Conqueror. And following his lead, we continue to map the world, push the boundaries of engineering. The Corps has blazed a trail of innovation and achievement for over 900 years and continues to operate at the cutting edge of technology today, often in the most inhospitable conditions with the threat of ultimate liability ever present, i.e. giving or taking life. But our soldiers always offer ingenious, practical solutions to major engineering challenges. Now, I've been a Royal Engineer for 34 years, and I continue to be amazed by the talent, devotion to duty, and professionalism of the proud sapper. So tonight, as we take a moment to recognize and reward some of the Corps' finest contributions to our legacy, I'm delighted we do so in the company of our civil partners who share our vision of engineering excellence and who also do so much to push the boundaries of the possible. So firstly, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors and partners who are here with us this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, your support, encouragement and participation is very much appreciated. I'm reminded of an ancient African proverb, which goes something like this. If you want to go fast, then go alone. If you want to go far, then go together. So I say let's go far together as we build stronger bonds of professionalism and friendship and we share in this celebration of engineering excellence. I'm delighted that you were able to sponsor us tonight and join the winning recipients of your award on stage. So closer to home, a few big thank yous. Firstly, to the Institution of Civil Engineers and particularly the Director General, Nick Baverstock, who sadly couldn't join us tonight, clearly having got a better offer in Hong Kong. <laughs> to our own Institution of Royal Engineers, to the Royal Engineers Association, which is looking after our veteran tribe so brilliantly. Mr. Paul Hewson is elected to join us tonight as an individual sponsor. Colonel Richard Hunt, Commanding Officer of the Engineering Logistics Staff Corps. And Mr. Martin McCann, Chief Executive of Red R. And finally, I turn to Lieutenant General Todd Semenite, my counterpart in the US Army, who flew in only last night. Todd, as our strongest fighting ally, we are honored and delighted to have you here tonight. May our bond of warrior friendship and cooperation strengthen even further as a result of you presenting the prestigious Windy Notchy Award. Army Strong Todd, thank you. Round of applause. So before I turn to the real stars of the evening, can I quickly thank the home team who have pulled together this extraordinary evening? And all from one of those classic three-star general's comments at the bar, which went something like, hey guys, I've had this great idea. You guys have done a truly amazing job, and you should be very proud of what you've delivered. I have no idea how you're going to top this next year, but I'm sure you've got some ideas. 
I'm not going to read out all your names in full because A, you're too numerous, and B, it's what we do, day in, day out, on behalf of our people. But I couldn't have done it without Matt, Simon, Bobby, Steve, Mike, Charles, Ian, Lorna, Michelle, and Yuli. The majority of you won't have a clue who I'm talking about, but you know that these events don't just happen. So please give it up for my home team, the Dream Team. Thank you. And finally, to the real stars of this evening. So to remind you, 13 of our 14 winners are here on this slide. These awards offer a small window into the depth and breadth of the talent, dedication and passion amongst all ranks in the Corps. They demonstrate the extent to which Royal Engineers offer the best in engineering expertise, academic excellence, individual endeavour, tradecraft and operational success in the face of a determined adversary. I'm going to read out these names now in full because it's what tonight is all about. So when you hear your name, stand up, stay standing, take a final bow and accept the applause. Sapper Gareth Adams, give it up. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Aubrey Seymour. <laughs> Sergeant Joseph Gardner. <laughs> Sapper Jack Brooks. Corporal Daniel Skinner, Sapper Rajan Rana, Sergeant Michael Twist, Captain Lawrence Meyer, Warrant Officer Class 2 Christopher Halliday, Lieutenant Ryan Walter, Corporal Thomas Adams, Corporal Christopher Rosie on behalf of Greg and Wilkinson and Corporal Anil Rai. Thank you guys. The applause that you have heard this evening from all 242 people in this great hall really does signify the high esteem you are all held in. I know the future of the Royal Engineers is really in good hands and it reinforces my view that people are the army, not in the army. This is the government's and the country's year of engineering, but for us here is always the year of engineering. 